Hello friends and welcome to Tutorials Point. Well, English as we all know is such a widely spoken language throughout the world. And because it is spoken so widely throughout the world, across different nationalities and countries and it knows no boundaries at all, you know, the way it is spoken, its accent, the vocabulary, uh, the pronunciation, all of that changes. And why it changes? Of course, it's because, you know, it is uh, seeped into the world like anything. So that is the level, uh, you know, to which English language is dissected. So don't you think it is a very, very good idea to be aware of the British and the American style of English and vocabulary, of course, it is. You know, there are situations wherein we have to deal with different clients. You might have a British client or you might have an American client. Or of course, you might have any client from, the, uh, you know, throughout the world. So, so of course, during these situations, basically the client that you are dealing with, it is definitely, uh, you know, very, very advisable and, you know, a very, very good move to be aware of their vocabulary. Not just clients. How about the, uh, you know, the, the, the situations wherein um, you go abroad or uh, students go abroad to pursue some further qualification? And because they go abroad, they go in different countries. So don't you think they should definitely be aware of, uh, you know, the way it is uh, spoken across uh, different countries? If you are aware of, uh, you know, the way it is spoken, it definitely becomes very, very easy for you to communicate with the people around. So just with this idea in mind, let us go ahead and discover this whole new world of vocabulary which is different, uh, you know, the same meaning, but the words which are used to represent them are different in British style and in American style. In India, of course, we uh, mostly follow the British English, but the American English is slightly different. Well, we are not just restricted to British English anymore. We, um, you know, because of all these web series and the social media and so on and so forth, the English that is spoken in India as well is also an amalgamation, right? So friends, let us go ahead and study about some words, uh, you know, certain vocabulary which is used differently in the British and the American English. Let's go ahead. Okay, to start off with, though we have an ocean of vocabulary which is used differently uh, in different uh, areas, of course, uh, how, do, how about we starting with football? So a Brit or a British would call it football, whereas American would call it soccer, right? So this is the difference, though the meaning is the same, right? So what if you just go ahead and, uh, and encounter, maybe you, you happen to see a football match and there it you, of course, because based on the location where you would be, you would definitely prefer to use either football or soccer, right? Or for that matter, how about a person standing in front of you saying, hey dude, let's go out for a soccer match. So you will very, very easily and quickly understand as to where is this person from. So that is the importance of learning this difference in vocabulary. Okay, how about autumn? So British, uh, you know, in British English, it's called as autumn, whereas Americans would call it fall. So don't you have those college students taking admission? So some take it in fall season, some take it in spring season. So that same uh, autumn, which uh, is, you know, that, that season of autumn, which is referred to uh, in the British uh, language, in the British English uh, to be more specific, is referred to as fall in American English, right? Okay, how about uh, coriander and cilantro? So coriander is of course a very, very commonly used herb in cooking, isn't it? So you happen to, what if you happen to, uh, you know, visit a market and therein you are searching for coriander, but to your surprise, little did you know that that same coriander was named as cilantro. So if you did not know this vocabulary, you would probably end up, you know, in a confusion, you won't even realize, right? So of course, we do not want that to happen. So uh, I think it's better for you to upskill your language and upskill yourself. So the same thing would be called as cilantro in American English and called as coriander in British English. Okay, resume and CV. So a Brit would call it resume, whereas an American would call it CV. So meaning is of course the same. 
So base is your location, base is wherever you are, base is the client whom you are interacting with. You might want to just change it just to make it, you know, just to create that communication or or maybe just to, to uh, merge in that entire environment. You might want to uh, change your words. It's just a different in, in semantics, right, which uh, would bring about a whole lot of difference because then your language will definitely not look, uh, you know, some from some some uh, different world and you won't look like an alien speaking English, right? So your language, I mean, if you are upskilled to that level, wherein uh, your language is, you know, as easy and seamless to go no matter wherever you are, is when it will become really, really, uh, you know, easy for you to uh, mix up in any environment wherein you are. So that is the importance of knowing this vocabulary. Okay. So a Brit would call it staff, whereas an American would call it faculty. So though same meaning, but different ways of communicating, right? So don't you think it is a good idea to be aware of both of them? Because we want to upgrade our language skills. We do not want to just, uh, you know, learn and then remain at one level. We, of course, have to uh, upgrade our language every day. So now that we are in that process, why not to be aware of, uh, you know, American and British way of speaking? Okay. So a Brit would call it maze, where an American would call it corn. Again, not a you know not something very very tough to gauge, though we are aware of both of these words. But now for for you know now it'll become easy for you to maybe uh, realize that a Brit would call it you know maze, where an American would call it corn. So meaning is same, but just the words are different. Good idea to learn both of them. Okay, how about porridge? A very very um, you know commonly. Uh, um, most people have it in breakfast, right? A very, very common breakfast. And an American would call it oatmeal. Not a huge difference. Just that difference in semantics. And once that you are aware, you're through it. You're pro. Okay. How about curtains, right? A Brit would call it curtains, whereas an American would call it drapers. So not a big difference. How about you going to market and buying curtains for yourself? Right, so basis your location wherever you are shopping, uh, you might want to call them curtains or drapers. So just to be, you know, just to upskill yourself and just to be aware as to how many different ways is this, uh, you know, language spoken and just to make you, you know, upskill and just to be aware of uh, wherever you are and how to use your language accordingly, it would definitely help you a lot, right? Okay, now an American would call it, um, of course, a Brit would call it flat, whereas an American would call it an apartment. Again, not a big difference, just to, uh, you know, easy for you to judge and decide where in which word to you to be used where. How about a wardrobe and a closet? A Brit would call it a wardrobe, whereas an American would call it a closet. So again, same meaning, but different words. So, and, uh, so a British would call it a nappy, whereas an American would call it a diaper. Again, very, very important for you to decide so that whenever you go for shopping, you don't end up getting confused. Okay, so a British would call it trousers, whereas an American would call it pants, right? So shopping material, you should, you better be aware of what to, uh, you know, what to ask for. Okay. British would call it handbag, whereas an American would call it purse. And last but not the least, a British would call it bill. And an American would call it check, right? So just a very, very, uh, you know, small difference, but very, very small thing to learn and easy thing to learn, but creates a whole lot of difference. So just be aware of both of these vocabularies, you know, both of these, um, both of diff the, both the different styles of speaking so that you can very, very easily uh, upskill your language and it will not become tough for you to, uh, you know, speak English fluently, easily, seamlessly, effortlessly, no matter where you are, right? So we'll see you again in the next video till that time. Have a good day. Keep learning with tutorials point and tutorials.